Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Rady Oddity QT40, which to me looks like the Anytone Aries 2. Now I don't have an Aries 2, so I cannot comment on how those work, but I do have the QT40. And today we're going to be looking to see what this little beast can do. Now I must admit, when I first saw this advertised online, I thought to myself that it's just going to be another cheap knockoff with loads of technical flaws. Well, so far, it's actually really surprised me, and I want to share with you my experience with this radio. Now, the QT40 is sold as a ham radio 10 meter multimode, capable of receiving and transmitting between 28 to 29.695 megahertz, with an output power of 12 watts on AM, 40 watts on FM, and 35 watts on SSB. Now, whether or not this radio can be wide banded for 25 to 30 megs will not be covered in this video. Now, this arrived as a 10 meter ham radio transceiver, so that's what I'll be testing. Now, also included is the ability to program up to 10 dedicated receive only channels that can be programmed between 140 and 170 megahertz in both narrow and wide FM. Now, for those in the US, it comes pre programmed for the weather and NOAA channels. Now in the box, you get all the usual accessories, such as the power cable, microphone, mounting bracket with fixings, and a manual which covers all the functions and features of this radio. What's also included is a USB programming cable, which can be used with a free downloadable programming software. Now more about that later, and it does contain some features which you can't access through the actual radio menu itself. Now the QT40 can store a total of 480 channels spread across six bands. Now each of these channels can be programmed using the software. The radio does come pre-programmed in 10 kilohertz steps per channel, and the fine tune control can be changed in software to cover a swing of five kilohertz either way, meaning there will be no stations you cannot tune to between the supported frequency range. Now for me, this radio has a real nostalgic look and feel with a rather large splash of modern technology thrown in. Now the front panel does have a CB radio 11 meter band radio look and feel, especially with the double barreled controls for volume, squelch, RF gain, mic gain and power levels. The vertical switches, S meter and channel display also add that nostalgic look that I remember from my CB radio days. It's nice to see the microphone socket coming out of the front of the radio as opposed to the side of the radio. The main audio output speaker is on the bottom of the radio, but there is a 3.5 mm external socket on the rear, which works really well with my studio mixer and speakers. Now also on the rear panel, we find the antenna connection, a PA 3.5 connection, the power socket and a USB socket, which of course is used with the included programming cable. There is a protruding heat sink on the rear without any fans, but this is to be expected with the power rating for this type of radio. Now in software, you can enable the controls value to be displayed on the LED screen. Now this is not enabled at default, but it's easily changed in software that I'll show you later. Now this is especially great for setting certain controls to a specific level, like mic gain or RF power output if you're gonna be using it with an external amplifier. As you'll notice, the channel display is only two digit, but performing a little trick with the microphone by holding down the up and down buttons, the current selected frequency will be displayed two digits at a time. For example, this is showing the frequency selected as 28.470 megahertz. But when the vertical band switch is set to H for high, the maximum channel you can select is channel 20 on band C which is 29.695 megahertz. Of course, that's because that's how it's been programmed, but it does leave you some headway to programming things like repeaters, which we'll talk about later. Now the noise blanker and noise limiter switches are pretty standard, but the NRC switch is something different on a radio like this. This is essentially a noise reduction, which the level can be set by switching the NRC switch to set and turning the main VFO knob. Now this does work, but don't expect noise reduction to the quality you'd find on the Yaesu FT-DX range of transceivers. 
Now let's hook it up to an outside antenna and take a listen around the band and then see if we can make at least one contact. After this, we'll go into checking power levels and take a look at the software, which contains features where you can design your own Roger bleep and configure the echo feature if you're into that kind of thing. Also, this radio can work on the 10 meter repeaters with split frequency programming, along with CTS CSS and DCS support. So this is great for when the conditions are exceptional and you can work those DX 10 meter repeaters in other countries. of the video I mentioned that this radio has a couple of flaws and you may have noticed that when I was changing channels the audio from the radio kind of dips out. Now it's not really a major flaw but it would have been nice to have the receive working consistently while tuning to eliminate the dip in reception and audio when changing frequency. Another flaw which you may have noticed was when I was listening to the YL operator there was a strong station just above her frequency. Now as there are no bandwidth settings, adjustable filters, passband shift, strong adjacent stations can bleed over slightly. Now it's not exactly a deal breaker considering this is what I would class as a fun radio. It's not a serious DX contesting workhorse here. So let's make a quick QSO using the Radio Oddity QT40. Italy, Kilo 4, Lima, Blue Hotel, calling and listening. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Uh, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey, 59. Yes, you're also 5'9 as well. 5'9 into the UK this afternoon. Nice to work you on 10 metres, 7'3s and good luck. Nice to meet you on 10, 7'3s, India, Kilo 4, Lima, Salute Hotel, calling and listening. Now what you may have noticed there while I was transmitting was that the channel display was changing from like 1.4 to 1.5. Now this is the SWR at the time of transmit. This can be enabled in software to permanently show the SWR while transmitting. Now I think that's a really cool little feature in my opinion. Also it helps protect the radio in case of faults with the antenna. So let's just do a quick power test through my power meter. Now here we do not have a perfect SWR so there is some reflected power and the only reason I'm doing this is because my dummy load broke and I've not yet replaced it but this should give us a ballpark figure. Now on FM we see a surprising 46 watts which is actually quite close to the stated specifications in fact it's a little over. Now on SSB specifically upper sideband and by whistling into the mic we can see an output of just under 30 watts. Now take into consideration that I'm using a slightly mismatched antenna along with a type of power meter I'm using, I would say that the radio matches the specifications. Okay, so now time for a quick audio test where I'll just use my RSP DX SDR to receive the transmitted audio. The Oddity 
QT10 on FM. So this is what it sounds like on FM. Uh, there's no kind of bandwidth settings or anything else apart from mic gain. Uh, the cur current moment, the mic gain is at maximum. If I put the mic gain to around the middle, this is around where the middle is, and obviously then you can turn it right down as well. But uh, that's maximum. Uh, let's just have a little bit of fun. So this is what the echo sounds like. Echo! Echo! One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is the Radiodity QT40 on upper sideband. This is how it sounds on upper sideband on the Radiodity QT40. And this is with some echo. Now, I think I sound like a cb -er. Okay, so lastly, let's take a look at the programming software. Now, the first thing I would recommend you do is read from the radio and then save that as a default programming memory bank from now on, you can then always go back to that if you make a mistake. Now the channel information dialog is where we can set up each channel for each of the six blocks of 40. As mentioned before, these are pre-programmed in 10 kilohertz steps. Now each channel within each block does have its own settings. So for example, if you wanted to add a plus or minus repeater shift or add an RX or TX CT CSS tone, then this is where you would do it. Now the weather channel dialog is where you can program the 10 FM receive only channels, which are activated when you change the band switch to WX. Now I tested this with a handheld radio nearby set to 145.500 FM, and yes, it did receive my audio. The optional feature dialog is where you can change most of the radio's features, like monitor levels, vox levels, echo, SWR protection, along with the checkboxes which add to the control value to the two-digit display when altering them. Now the thin step setting is one of the most important ones to change. Now by default mine was set to 500 Hz, which means the fine tuner adjustment would only swing 500 Hz either way, which is not enough to tune stations between each 10 kHz channel. So change this to 5 kHz and then you won't have a problem tuning any station in between. And lastly, you have the Roger Beep section where you can create your own Roger Beep. Now it's not very often that you hear a Roger Beep being used on 10 meters, which is quite surprising considering how close we are to that country that starts with an I. And nope, I do not mean Ireland. However, I have heard them, but personally, I wouldn't use a beep or an echo on 10 meters. It's just asking for trouble. Anyway, guys, there we go. That's the Radi Oddity QT40. Now, if you guys have got one of these radios, or even if you've got maybe the Anytone Aries 2, let me know what you think of it. If you're an Anytone Aries 2 owner, does this seem familiar? Does it look like it's exactly the same? I'll be uh, interested to know, and I'm sure everyone else will be as well. If you know of any other great features of this radio, or maybe you know some flaws about this radio that you've experienced while using it over time, then leave it down in the comments below. We'll all be interested in reading them. Now, if you fancy getting yourself one of these radios, check out the link I've got down in the description where you'll get some money off when you buy direct from Radio Oddity. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you're not subscribed and you like my style of presentation, then please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.